So in the past 12 months, 15 months, it seems like the world has just been through a heck of a lot and we're still going forward and things are overwhelming and uncertain. And a lot of us are just simply tired. It's brought um, to the surface a lot of beautiful things about human beings and a lot of negative and kind of funky trained stuff about human beings. My question for you today, have you ever taken a step back in the last 12, 15 months and ever had a thought of what would Jesus do? Today, we're going to take some time to look at ways that how if we adhered to the teachings and mindset of Jesus Christ, how the world around us would be a heck of a lot different and how it would affect us individually, internally. Now, I'm going to start off with saying, I know some of you might be listening and saying, well, I'm not a Christian, um, I don't know what I believe, or I'm an atheist, or I'm a Christian. So this today is me giving you my personal experiences in life, my personal observations, and um, it's to me when it comes to the decision we make with our own um, relationship and our own journey, it's our choice. But I will tell you in my own life, it's something that I've shared before. Um, I made a decision a number of years ago uh, to give my life to Jesus Christ. Um, I've had some crazy training experiences in my life in different times where um, I would kind of slap on the title, if title is the word, uh, you know, as an atheist. Um, I went back to, uh, you know, to, uh, to Judaism for some time. Um, and I kind of floated, right? I came to a pivotal point in my own personal journey, my own life that I realized myself that um, my life just felt like I was treading water. Um, I didn't know it was up. I didn't know it was down. Um, I knew living just for myself really made no sense. I knew at the end of my life there was there was something more. And I believed in my heart after reading documents from, you know, tr uh, different religions that I knew I had a peace in my life about connecting and making that step forward and having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's changed my life. I have a hope. I have a peace that I really can't describe that um, has been an awesome journey. And it's a journey that will not be over until I take my last breath. Um, and with that, you know, I, I, I was thinking just a few nights ago how we're just in a really weird, funky place right now in history. And I thought, you know what, if Jesus was walking through these streets, right, uh, if Jesus was, um, you know, watching TV or on social media, what would he think? And what would it be if us as human beings really pursued a mindset that was really Christ-based? I remember when I worked um, in a high, a high school I worked at in South Jersey, I, I prayed every single morning when I walked in to have different attributes of Christ. And these are things that I'm going to share with you today. Um, and I believe uh, that, man, we're in a weird place. And it's so easy to feel overwhelmed and funky and to say like, okay, uh, there's so much and I'm feeling overwhelmed and squished. Today, this is kind of about allowing ourselves to feel unsquished, if you will. Uh, and the first thing I want to look at that I believe greatly that we as human beings looking at, looking at, looking at hearts instead of titles, hearts instead of titles. And Jesus Christ was a crazy trained example of living this out where too often we can get caught up in what people's titles are, their roles are, um, how much money they have, what kind of cars they drive. And with that, this, this kind of gooky, funky material items, and that's who, that defines you and where Jesus Christ was able to look at somebody's heart literally and be like, you know, that they wanted to pursue a relationship with him, with him or they wanted to just find peace and goodness and change the world through their through goodness and doing something more than that was just self-serving and saying like, you know, this is my this is my title, this is how much money I got. Um, it was more this super duper connection with people that possessed humility kindness and desiring something more than just material. And that's not to say people that have a lot of money or titles um, can't be this, this, that's not true, but I think it's very easy to get caught in a trap that somebody that has those things or somebody, if you know, I have this title or I'm this person, that that's my worth. And that's not the case. Um, with titles that this is what I, where I love in today's, today's day and age. Um, Jesus wasn't about, 
uh, about finding anything with political gain. There was no, I'm taking Republican side or Democrat side or independent side or whatever side. It was straight up truth. It was straight up truth and straight up connecting with people's hearts. And with that, it provides such a stronger sense of authenticity. And I believe in a lot of ways that we've lost that or we've muddled it or we've lost our grip on it. Um, the ability to just look at someone's heart and what kind of person are they? And as flipping that on our side, our hearts and not our exterior, our hearts and not what kind of car we drive, our hearts, not where we live and how massive that is. And, you know, I had shared with you a little earlier about when I worked in South Jersey, I remember every morning I would walk in. And I would walk in and open the doors and say, you know, God, give me the eyes of Christ. And one of those things was being able to see people's hearts. I don't care what you look on the outside. I don't care how many tattoos or piercings or what kind of clothes you wear or, you know, the his your family's history, whether that's good or bad or what role you have in the community. If we're able to not be influenced by that and instead inspired and, and influenced by the beauty of someone's heart, dude crazy beautiful things can can stem from that crazy beautiful things and it's this looking at people's hearts is really significant it's super significant but it's also taking time to get that connection which we can't have with everybody but i'd ask this how is your heart connection knowing if something that you know it's something you've struggled with today is an awesome perfect day for a new beginning of strengthening that and how am I going through my day to day? Am I looking at people's hearts? Or am I getting caught up in the gooky stuff? Am I getting caught up in distractions? And how am I living my life? Is it with my heart? Or is it something that I'm, I'm getting distracted yet again? But it's, I, I loved how uh, Jesus, with all his goodness and kindness and, and selflessness, was just didn't mess around. You know, it wasn't picking sides. It was saying, this is it. Don't be a butthead, that it's not about you, it's not about your titles, it's not about your stuff, it's in here, internally. And if we took time to really take a step back, and where are we internally? How are we really living? Are we looking and pursuing that within our own heart and other people and looking at, at what their needs are and what they, where they are as human beings? Those the people that we associate with, our friends or coworkers, are we getting distracted? And now this brings us to our second part, the pursuer of people. Jesus was a pursuer of people. He wanted real deal relationships, connecting to our first one where it wasn't getting caught up in titles. It was the pursuit of people's hearts and this authenticity he sought to heal, to feed, to comfort. And, and whether we can sometimes get distracted where we're looking at somebody and how they look, you know, mm, you know, I don't know this person and what they did or what. It's it's taking a step back and what are people's needs? And you could say, error, I'm tired, I'm overwhelmed, I don't know how I can fulfill you know other people's needs right now. I'd ask you to take some time to reflect about that a little bit. It doesn't have to cost money because part of our existence, part of our inner core, we need, we do desire, whether we, we've gotten maybe a little dusty with that realization or not, the fact that of serving other people, of giving back and finding needs around us, what does that look like? Um, and it could be somebody who's, go, who's grieving right now. Man, they're tired. They're just, they're crying, they're hurting. And it's not necessarily, you know, you have to sit down and have a, a, a four hour session chatting about intense stuff. It could just be going for a walk and have, you know, having a cup of coffee, just light talk, just an ability to, to hear, just we so, so, so um, need to be pursuer of people. And because at the same time of us kind of being there, it's us having our cup filled. It really goes both ways. Um, it's, it's taking time to step up and, and serve in a way that really allows us to be filled more. It really does. And that can sometimes be hard to understand when we're tired. But if it's something we take time to kind of clear our minds and think about and looking within our community, what are the needs? But also on the other end, when it comes to pursuer of people, the people in our own lives, our tribe, are, are we pursuing people with similar hearts, hearts of people that pursue others um, of people, 
of, of humility, of kindness, that are our heart people, not title people. These are all different things to think about. If you're looking for ways to just enrich your life, to transform how you've been really living. Like I, I, I asked that to myself, reflect, am I really authentically living? It's connecting with the heart of another person when it comes to authentic relationships, whether it's serving, whether it's friendships. Authenticity is key. It's not getting caught up by the distractions, by the gook, by the funk. It's true stuff. And it's, it's to me, it's taking that kind of reflection check-in periodically throughout the course of our life because there's times that we need to tweak things a little bit. There's times we need to just change maybe the direction we're going and it's not beating ourselves up about it, but saying, okay, it's time for some growth. It's time to, to tweak things. And then that brings me to this, our, our next one, looking at the aspect of rest and reprieve. We can get so busy being busy. We can get so distracted. We can get so caught up, um, whether that's personally or professionally. It's easy to do that we do not take time for ourselves. We don't take time to breathe. We don't take time to rest. And I will say this, Jesus Christ was the son of God. He walked this earth for 33 years. And there's in the Bible references that it talks about how within his ministry, he was hardcore. We're going, we're talking, these people were, you know, how many miles and miles they put walking, you know, during the day and, you know, feeding people and reaching out. But, 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 but with all that, he took time to rest. He took time to pray. He took time to recharge, right? Hello. So what does that like super tell us? If that was a part of his lifestyle, because it was a necessity for healthy living. Now that gives you time to pause and think, how am I doing with that? Right? If Jesus uh, had time to do it and Jesus, not only had time, but me time, it was like allocated, um, you know, he's in the, in, in the middle uh, the Sea of Galilee, and there's a storm, and it's waves are crazy, and he's taking a nap, right? And the disciples are like, what? Wake up. Why are you resting? He was resting. He was resting even in a time of storm. And thinking about in our own lives, when we're going through some crazy train stuff, we're overwhelmed, or we're stretched thin, it's, it is very easy to kind of fold and say, I don't have time. I don't have time to take care of myself. I don't have time to take that rest. I don't have time. You were created with purpose. You were, you were created with intention. And part of that spoke of the wheel, those little spokes, is you need time to breathe. You need time to rest. You need time to recharge. And it's setting time aside. I'm, I'm a believer in taking time. You know, in the morning, for me, it's the morning. I am a morning person. I'm not a night person. I've tried. doesn't work. Um, where I set a time, time to pray time for me in the morning to just clear my mind, um, do quiet time, connect with God, uh, connect even like with myself where it's like the day's so easy to start and it's like, pew, right? Blah, it's going. And then you're like, what? Just clearing our minds. Maybe it's, you know, for you, it's, I, I got to do some stretches and yoga and I've got to do some deep breathing. What is your, what is your time? Your rest and reprieve because it is a necessity. It is super necessity and it's so easy to just be put it to the side, but our bodies need recharge. Our bodies um, need this time to just kind of boom, be jump started. And so with that, where are you in that area of your life? Where are you with rest and reprieve? Are you taking time to chill and to recharge? Um, you know, we looked at when it comes to hearts, people and rest three areas that Jesus rocked out, uh, set the ultimate example for, gave really this healthy example of like, how are we supposed to conduct ourselves? Looking at people for the hearts, not their titles, right? I'm, I'm taking time to pursue real authentic relationships, but also serve with my heart. And then it's taking time to rest and recharge. These are three pretty massive things three spokes to the wheel of our life that have the ability to transform us. But it's a choice just like anything that we have to make. It's a choice that we have to step forward and we can think about what do I want to do? But until we allow ourselves to write it down or have some form of game plan, if we, it will not happen and come to fruition unless we take action, unless we take action. 
It does real deal good stuff, my friends. And if you're looking at continuing that pursuit, you're looking in terms of mental wellness, I'd love for you to check this out. Continue to pursue your mental wellness, my friends. And if you haven't already, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the Goodness Chick channel. Wishing you today an abundance of peace, love, and goodness, my friends.